<laughs> hey girl, you you know you know what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna respect your bodily autonomy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna respect it hard. <laughs> so, uh, when we gonna nut? Wait, wait, what? You mean we're not gonna nut? <laughs> I'd try something new today where I stand. Fun fact, Tara Mooney has legs. Uh, before we get into the thick of it, I would like you to meet someone. Isn't she gorgeous? I have a cheeky favour to ask you, a cheeky cheeky, a cheeky little favour. May you help me name her? Suggest some cute names for this cute girl in the comments please and I will reveal it in the next video. Oh, and if you're new here, my name is Tara Mooney and this is the only channel on YouTube where all videos are written and produced by a cow. She couldn't be in the video today because she's actually filming some TikTok POVs herself, but if you like and subscribe, she might appear in the next one. So as a uh, commentary tuber, which I guess I am, it seems only fitting that I should talk about TikTok. Talk the talk. Talk talk. I've got to talk about TikTok. It's the law. And I haven't for quite a while because A, I'm not actually on the app and B, it's hell. So if I can avoid thinking about it, I will. But sometimes I come across some talks that intrigue and or bemuse me. And that is what today's video is about. Consent talk or uh, consent POVs to be precise. So for the woefully uninitiated, basically TikTok POVs or point of views are what they sound like. Point of views, uh, the person in the TikTok interacts with the camera, i.e. you. So you might have a guy with swoopy hair pretend to be your crush. You might have a guy with swoopy hair pretend to be your weird boyfriend. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> you're mine. You might have a guy with swoopy hair pretend to be your weird boyfriend getting arrested. I saw the light beside the You might have a guy with swoopy hair pretend to be your vampire murderer guy. And listen, I don't want to kink shame because clearly some people get off from this. I guess what weirds me out though is that often these are created by men whose audiences are primarily teenage girls, as in youths. So this does call into question an ethical question, which is, is it really freaking weird to make thirst traps for your underage fans? But that is a question for another day. So shall we see what all the fuss is about? How y'all doing? Yep, it's that time of the video. But hey, you're not allowed to complain because I'm about to show you my dog being really cute. But before I do, I would like to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, Honey, Honey. Honey is banging and you know that I know that you know that I know that you know that. I would recommend them to anyone and everyone because I have been using them for years. But in case you live underneath a rock, Honey is a free browser extension that searches the internet for coupon codes and automatically applies them when you're checking out whilst you're doing your online shopping. It also couldn't be any easier to download. You can download it in two easy clicks. And when you're checking out, all you need to do is click apply coupons and boom, 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 Honey does all the work for you. I use Honey every time I do my online shopping and you know that bedding you all loved in my amatonormativity video? Well, Honey helped me get 25% off of it. 
it. That's a whole quarter. Yeah, I know my fractions. I can cut a pie. Honey is supported on 30,000 sites. So once you get honey, you'll be saving so many simoleons. And did I mention it's free and available on all browsers? To install Honey, go to joinhoney.com slash Tara so they know that I sent you. You'll save money and it helps out the channel when you check them out, which means the cow can get fed premium grass. So it's win-win all around. So yeah, check out Honey, Honey. And thank you, Honey, for sponsoring. So this first guy is called Nolan, like uh, Christopher Nolan, except that's his first name. Uh, he's a big boy on TikTok, as in he has a lot of followers. I don't know if he's a big boy physically. So he's got 1.5 milli followers, 3.3 milli likes, and his whole shtick is that he makes POVs, hence POVs with Nolan. He's a POV connoisseur. He's like um the wine connoisseurs. What, what are they called? The ones that, you know, is it a Somali Somalia? Is that how you pronounce it? He's like that, but instead of slushing wine around his gums, he slushes around POV videos. Probably the most annoying thing about TikTok POVs is that they're not actually point of views. He's just mad I'm hot as shit. All these girls are fat like bitch. I think y'all could use some tips. I'm skinny, I'm winning. And all you bitches are ugly. ugly. All the guys in my phone. So according to this description, I, the viewer, the audience member, am the nerd, right? But then he's playing the nerd. You had one job, Nolan. Let's watch another and see if he gets it right this time. <laughs> Oh, thank God. So now that you're acquainted with Mr. Nolan, let's watch that consent POV. You can't take your girlfriend to Chick-fil-A. What if she's gay? I understand that TikToks are meant to be, you know, short, snappy, but I love how uh, realistic the dialogue is. <laughs> Uh, when I first watched this, I thought, apart from how cringy it is, what's the problem? Isn't talking about consent inherently good and promoting it to your teenage audience? Uh, you know, that's, that's good, right? Education. And when it comes to teenage boys, they're more likely to listen to other boys or men. And in fact, I couldn't help but do just a slither of research for this video, and I found a very interesting article in Dazed about this very phenomenon, specifically Mr. Nolan here. They even interviewed him. The reason why I like making this. <laughs> Sorry, I won't do that the whole time, otherwise I won't be able to get through it. <laughs> So this is what he said. The reason why I like making those videos is because I realize that I have a younger audience that most likely have not been through that yet. It's one of my duties to show the realities of what can happen at college parties. I want to stress to guys that if they see their friend doing something bad, stick up for the girl. Tell them to stop. And that's a good point. TikTok is where all the youths congregate nowadays, or at least that's what I've heard. Uh, so if you want to, you know, educate them and get on their level, you got to meet them where they're at. You gotta get down with the kids. However, Izzy Copesteak, the writer of said article, uh, is a little more skeptical of this. And she made an argument that kind of changed my mind. But before I reveal what that is, let's hear a little bit more from Nolan. Nolan goes on to say that he's well aware that the thirst trap format of these videos helps bring in views. That's just how TikTok is. That's how media is in general. Sex appeal and all that stuff. They're just trying to get their views. So if most of his audience are there for the thirst traps and they're straight girls and women, then the message isn't really reaching the entire intended audience, is it? Also, let's be real, if guys came across this video, they'd just roast the shit out of it because it is goofy. Here's another example, but this time it's by a guy called Oliver All. Oliver All? Oliver Owl. I don't know, he's a guy with floppy hair. They're all the same, aren't they? <laughs> Just the matter way, if you like to say I'm on the floor. 
He was also interviewed. Those traps get views. Sorry, I, <laughs> I'm sure their voices are perfectly normal. This is just the voice I imagine him having. But anyway, <laughs> those traps get views. That's why I do them. It's what my followers like. I've tried to talk about serious issues before, but these videos don't do well and impact my engagement, so I delete them. The thirst trap draws them in, and then they get hit with the serious topic. So it's a similar situation to Nolan, where you wonder if the intended audience of the PSA is actually being reached, as in the people that need to hear this. By the way, I'm not saying that women and girls don't need to learn about consent. I think absolutely everyone should, but I'm directly responding to the argument that they've made that the whole point is to educate guys so they can call out other guys, right? But it seems like guys aren't seeing it. And what these guys are saying won't be illuminating to their audience as they are women and girls. So instead, what you get is a load of comments praising them for saying something that the audience already agree with. So what has been achieved here? What do you do successfully, quickly? And of course, I can't not mention that this highlights how low the bar really is. <laughs> It's the bare minimum. The bar is Antarctica at this point, but it's presented like some sexy scenario, which is pretty bleak. And this led to me pondering about the phrase, consent is sexy, and how I used to say that phrase unquestioningly, but perhaps it's actually not the best phrase to use. So consent is a basic human right, right? Bodily autonomy. Consent isn't sexy, it's a mere requirement for you to not someone right? Oh, and another thing is that this all feels a bit nice guy adjacent, you know? As if being a decent human being needs to be rewarded. Consent isn't just about getting a yes and going through with it, it's also about hearing no and respecting it. And I want to stress that I don't think these guys are bad guys. And I wouldn't label them as pick me boys because uh, the phrase pick me boy is mostly used by people on TikTok who have misunderstood the meaning of the original phrase, you know, pick me or pick me girl, which uh, originates from AAVE, African American Vernacular English. But I digress. Bernie Good, a cyber psychologist, which is the coolest thing ever. Actually, I take that back, that sounds like hell actually. People on the internet suck. <laughs> Bernie, I hope you're okay. She said this. It may appear that some of the TikTok POVs are seeking to draw females in by appearing progressive and explicitly saying things in their POVs about consent. My view is that these males could actually be manipulating females. If consent should be a given that females should absolutely expect, then why would it be used as a thirst trap? Good goes on to describe thirst traps that revolve around consent a manipulation of human emotions. And I oop. <laughs> I can't help but laugh at the thought of these guys being interviewed for this article, having no idea how scathing it was gonna be. <sighs> but it's super entertaining, and whilst I might not agree with all the arguments made in this article, I think it's really compelling and interesting, so of course I will link it in the description. So Bernie, do I agree with her? Genuinely, I don't know. My gut says that these guys just heard the phrase consent is sexy and thought it would be a fun POV. They probably just thought, oh yeah, this will be hot, my audience will like it, and didn't think much further than that, right? I mean, I think it's fair to say that TikToks don't necessarily take months of scripting and planning. But anyways, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. We don't know their intentions, so I would argue that their intentions are less important in this instance, and it's more about the impact. And frankly, if the goal was to educate teenage boys about consent, uh, they missed the mark here. Soz. These talks were viewed either by their audience, who drink up anything they make because they think they're hot, or people like myself who watch them for the cringe factor. That is my conclusion. That being said, I do think there is room for consent education on TikTok. There are creators doing that successfully, in my opinion, and there are men educating other men and boys in a way that seems to be effective. I'm actually not a chat. I'm just the opposite, and I'll prove it to you. Hey, I think you're really pretty, but I also have a lot of respect for you. Thank you. 
Wanna hook up? Sounds good to me, but not without your consent. Cool guys get consent. Haven't you heard? I guess the main issue here is that they're POVs. <laughs> POVs are cringe and they should be illegal. That's my conclusion. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, make sure to give it a like because one like equals one POV actually done correctly where they're interacting with you and you're the person that they say you are in the caption. I was a bit long-winded, but you know what I mean. Right, make sure to check out Honey, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.